Welcome back. Okay, everyone. In this module, we're going to learn all about the fourth step of 5S, which commonly goes by the name of standardize. Specifically, by the end of this module, you'll know exactly what both standardize and visual management is, why they're important, and some examples of them in action. All right. Before we define standardize, let me just say that we gave serious consideration as to whether to even include the standardized step in this 5S course. Now, this may sound a bit odd, but after we defined it, you'll better understand the dilemma we faced. So standardize, in the context of 5S, is simply the result of doing the first three steps properly, namely sort, straighten, and sweep. In fact, many companies actually refer to it as 3S and not 5S, why some companies call it 4S, and yet others add safety and call it 6S. And while none of these are wrong or better than the other, it goes without saying that to excel at lean, we must at a minimum master the sort, straighten, and sweep steps. Another way of looking at it is all we're doing with this step is making what we want done visible so there's no guessing involved. Since making things in our factories, offices, and other places of work visual is essential to the success of 5S as it helps everyone know what to do and how to do it. It also helps us identify when something's not right, allowing us to implement a countermeasure immediately. Along these lines, Taichi Ono, one of the chief architects of the Toyota production system, was fond of saying, where there's no standard, there can be no improvement. In other words, if there's no consistency to the way work is done, how could one ever expect to improve it? In addition to these important facts, there's another extremely powerful reason standardization is so important. And this reason is the second law of thermodynamics, otherwise known as entropy. Now, if you force yourself to think back to your college or high school days, you'll recall that entropy is a measure of the disorder in any system. Put another way, entropy helps us measure the energy that disperses or spreads out in a process. So, for example, when you drive over a nail, your tire eventually blows out. Well, here in Texas, we like our backyard barbecues. And when I'm done cooking my food, my grill eventually cools off, even in a hot Texas air. And these are both examples of entropy at its best. And with this said, when we sort, straighten, and sweep an area into a thing of beauty, it's also entropy that does its very best to undo it. So, you could say that this standardized step essentially keeps its eye on entropy and helps us continuously fight against it. Okay, well, let's spend the rest of this module going, going over some examples and techniques of both visual management and standardized in action. Now, as a review, visual management is used to make it clear what's normal. This reduces discussion about what the standard should be. You see, standards can always be improved, but once a standard is set, it's important to make it visual so that it's maintained. Now, a good way to maintain and improve performance is to make the status visible. For example, this 5S radar chart shows how well the workplace is doing on their 5S score. The goal is to achieve a score of 5 and maintain it through continuous improvement. And since safety should always be in the forefront of all we do, let's look at what we call a safety cross. A safety cross is a visual tool that tracks when and how frequently accidents occur. In this example, we see that days with no accidents are, are shaded in green, and when an accident occurs, we color that day in red. And according to what we see here, this company has gone 16 days without an accident. Now, the cross shape is not mandatory, but it is often used as it symbolizes safety. And we're providing a free safety cross template in the download section, so feel free to download and use it throughout your facilities. Now, as part of your standardized activities, you may also want to color code the workplace. To do this, you can reference any existing standards your organization has for color coding to avoid confusion. Now, we've listed some uh, common codes here, but again, check with your safety organization before implementing them. Another excellent technique is to standardize cleaning duties. Now, this can be done on a simple sheet of paper that's on display in the workplace. As this example shows, we can easily identify what needs to be clean, who is responsible, and when it should be done. The materials required, and finally a section to identify the root cause of the filth, as well as countermeasures for eliminating it. Next, standard work documents are also excellent examples of standardized in action since they make it very clear how to do a job. Now, as a side note, we plan to offer a course on standard work in the future, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. Now, this example, 
the warehouse is set up so that the picking of products for shipment happens in one direction. The picking list is used and the arrows are followed so there's no need for searching. The standardized step also helps us identify when things are not where they're supposed to be. For example, in the top picture we notice a scrap bin out in the middle of the shop floor, while the scrap bin in the bottom picture is clearly where it's supposed to be. And while you may not be able to tell in this picture, there are clearly labeled instructions on what can and cannot be placed in the bottom bin. Another way to standardize is with position marks as shown here. This is a simple but very powerful technique that makes it very clear when an item is missing. Now, one of the big inefficiencies in an office environment is looking for information or knowing who has the information. Well, one technique used by companies is to use diagonal colored tape outlining items on the shelf. Now, if something is missing, you can see from far away. This, combined with a checkout list, Showing who has borrowed the file or book makes it easy to locate the information. And while not necessarily examples of standardization, the following examples demonstrate how visual controls are actually all around us. For example, this visual control provides instructions such as what to do in case of a fire, while this one tells us what not to do when dangerous equipment is operating. Standard labels can also alert us of danger in other ways, like we see on this beaker of corrosive liquid. Next, if you've ever gotten a little heavy-footed in your automobile, you may have approached the red line area of your tachometer. This is actually a powerful visual control in action as it alerts us of problems ahead if we keep it up. You can also use zone labels on the gauges of your equipment while marking out the normal operating ranges as well as the red line range for that piece of equipment. Finally, good standards provide caution and operating reminders in other ways as well. Now, During my first trip to the UK, I wondered what mind the gap meant. Then, about 15 seconds later, a train zoomed past me and then I knew. Luckily, even though I wasn't exactly sure what the phrase meant, I knew to stay behind the yellow line. So, these are just some examples of visual controls and standards in action. There are obviously many more, but keep in mind, if all you ever did was relentlessly focus on sort, straighten, and sweep, this fourth step would take care of itself. Now, with this said, let's turn our attention to our favorite bookshelf. As you've already seen, we've sorted, straightened, and swept the bookshelf. Now, my latest move was to add color-coded diagonal tape to the spines of the books. This way, when I need to put a book back, I can easily spot where it goes, and I can also tell when one is missing. And yes, I will have to retape if I add books to the shelf, but that's a small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. And having the self-discipline to follow through with this type of behavior is critical if I hope to sustain this level of performance. And as timing would have it, that's exactly what we're going to talk about next, so we'll speak to you soon.